Hello, my name is Katharina Grimme from PAC. I've just come off the D6 panel of the Shared Services Outsourcing Woche, where we had a panel of six visionaries um, in the industry. And with me now, straight from the panel, is Tom Bangemann, who is um, working with Hackett Group. And um, we want to elaborate a little bit on the discussions that, um, that came up in the panel there. Now, one of the key questions really is, what are the development trends that we're seeing in the shared services and outsourcing industry? Tom, you mentioned flexibility as one of the key ones. Maybe could you, could you elaborate a little bit on that? Sure, yeah, flexibility is sort of a required outcome of a major trend. The major, major trend that we uh, see is that Based on the last crisis, basically, we saw that revenues in Europe, for example, dropped about 20% on average. And our companies need to steer against it. Uh, but in about a one-year period, what you can do to steer against it in all of support functions is about 3%. So if I have 20% drop in my revenue, also my volumes drop. So in simple words, you know, suddenly I have 200,000 invoices less than I had. I don't need those FTEs to do the 200,000 invoices because they're not coming in apart from the fact that the numbers might be smaller, but there's just less volume. So currently we have this environment which obviously everybody agrees is somehow unstable or insecure, at least it's volatile. And companies are finding it um, very important to somehow reorganize their back office functions in a more flexible way. Right? So I don't know if there's going to be a next crisis. We both probably don't, but there also might be an upturn. You know, there might be 10% growth. Uh, in both cases, we just need to be more, vola uh, more flexible in, in terms of responding to the volatility. So in shared services, we're seeing organizations are trying to find different ways of making it more flexible. Shared service per se is one tool, because whenever I've consolidated people into larger groups, I can do something on that. So if I have two or three or four people and I want to cut off 10%, it doesn't work because I can't cut off arms and legs, right? But if I have 50, I might be able to do that. So it's not fun, we agree, but if I have to do it, at least it works. Uh, outsourcing is another way to make it more flexible. Now, in outsourcing, I'm supposed to be flexible because I'm utilizing an external provider, right? Now, I also need to make sure my contract has been set up in a way that I have flexibility in it, right? So I can have a range in it where I can go up and down or whatever it is that I do, but I need to somehow set it up that way. Most of them are not necessarily very flexible, but in principle it's a good tool. And there are other things, but shared service outsourcing helps to meet the overall demand that basically on the sea level um, is, is required. And what is the importance of location? The location of a shared service center um, in, in order, for example, well, to make use of labor arbitrage or indeed in order to support the operations of uh, um, international organizations gl uh, growing, for example, in emerging markets. Okay, so if we, if we take it from a larger point of view, larger picture point of view, we've got globally currently about 4,200 shared services. Out of those, about two-thirds are captive, one-third is BPL. Out of those 4,200, we have 1,600 in Europe, and out of the 1,600, we've got only 500 in CEE, so Central Eastern Europe, and 1,100 are still in Western Europe. So actually, the migration has just started. So we might be feeling, you know, that everything's going and constantly something's moving and all these jobs are getting cut off and so on. But actually, we only have about 20% so far that has been offshored. So this is really the beginning of it. It's a really painful piece from sort of a sender point of view is still coming. Um, now, the good thing in terms of selecting these locations, wherever they are, is that we have so many to choose from that there's more options than we can actually utilize. So 20 years ago when shared service started, we might have had one, two, three great places to go to and everybody consolidate into the same place, which then let the labor market explode. Nowadays, we can go to at least 100 places. So if we look at what some people call nearshoring, we tend to call it offshoring because it doesn't matter if it's 500 or 5,000 kilometers, it's not where it used to be, so it's fairly black and white, either it's local or it's not. So if we go to Central Eastern Europe, the typical, uh, typical candidates obviously Poland, Czech, Slovakia and Hungary, uh, so the V4 countries as they're also called. Um, Poland is four times the population of Czech and Hungary, so 40 million to 10 to 10, Slovakia is only half of that. So 
if you look at it from a labor pool point of view, Poland's got an enormous potential because they only have about 20% more shared services. So there's huge potential in going there, uh, from a, simply from a supply side uh, point of view. Now, even in Budapest, which is the largest sort of capital you can find between Vienna and Moscow, basically, um, you've got two million people and labor pool is large. So even if they have 50 shared services, there's still eno enough room for much, much more. And then there's all these second tier locations coming up now. So, for example, the Baltic countries are starting to make really good entries. Uh, there's small labor market. I mean, Estonia is one, Latvia two, Lithuania three million, sort of. I round it a bit, right? But they're small. If you want to set up, you know, Siemens shared services with 6,000 FTEs, doesn't work there. But if you have 100 FTEs, it might be a very good choice. Um, so some companies prefer a proven location. So they want to go where there's 20 others because they say these other 20 have selected the location, so they've done all the selection work, it must be a good place. Especially if they have some brand names, then we all assume they've done a good job. Some companies say, no, I don't want to go there because there's so much competition there. I don't have a brand name. They have, so they're going to take all my good people. So how am I going to be able to compete with them? It's not going to work. So I want to go into a say, second or third tier location where I actually own the market. So I am then going to be the small big name in the city and then everybody works there. Um, so therefore there's so many options now that um, that is actually quite nice from a company point of view uh, to select and, and if we're really honest um, all these location selection tours I think they're the best part of some of these projects. I mean, when we do projects you have maybe five people on the client side that really participate all the time but when there's a location selection suddenly you have 15 who all think that they need to go and all assess the place and all have an opinion for sure. So, you know, location assessment is, is, is really a, a fun activity. But ultimately, to your question, it actually does not matter. Because the point of shared services is to provide a service that's not tied to the location and you can do it remotely. And the philosophy behind it in principle is that you put in a best, pra uh, best practice process best practice organization, technology, and so on. And it's actually location independent. So if I have a process design, whether I put this thing to Krakow or Riga or Tallinn, it actually doesn't matter. So therefore, the location component is actually much overstated by the client. Um, but it is something that they have sort of emotions attached to. And therefore, you need to overcome that. And it, therefore, it could take very, very long to get to a decision even though it actually does not matter that much. Mm -hmm. That's I think a very interesting message uh, to consider obviously for uh, all uh, uh, all companies that are engaged in shared service operations um, because they will have to look at this um, and they will eventually come to the point that <laughs> what you said it doesn't matter. Thank you very much Tom Bangemann. Thank you Thank very you. much for taking part in the D6 panel and we look forward to having you again here next year I hope.